Listen, I'm Rick Sanchez from Earth Dimension C-137. Don't mean you any harm. Coming in peace. It's all cool in the uh, good in the neighborhood is what I was trying to come, is what I meant. Okay, here's part four of making Rick Sanchez. And last time we left off, we had the head that could turn. Listen, I'm Rick Sanchez from Earth Dimension C-137. Don't mean any harm. Coming in peace. Let me turn off the reference layer so you can see just what we've created. Peace. It's all cool in the uh, good in the neighborhood. Is what I was... So let's go ahead and start making the body. I'm going to go back to frame zero. And I'm going to go ahead and hide the timeline so we have a little bit more space to work with by hitting command and left bracket. And let's turn that reference layer back on. And first thing we're going to do is create a new bone layer. So we'll go to vector or bone layer. And we'll just call this Rick Sanchez. This is going to be the main bone group or main group for the entire character. And I'll go ahead. I'm going to grab the head bone or the head group and the uh, reference picture and drag and drop those into that new group that we just made because um, everything needs to fall underneath that. And if you guys see me um, moving around, moving the uh, canvas around, I'm just holding space bar. And if I'm zooming in and out, I'm using my mouse wheel. So you'll see me doing this a lot, um, zooming in and out and moving. Sometimes I just hold the space bar down so I can click and move and then just uh, hold, even with the space bar held down, I'll zoom in and out. So if I'm doing that fast, that's how you do it. And let's go ahead and start making his body. We'll go to be back to frame zero. So make sure you're on frame zero. Um, I hit the timeline, but you can just hit the uh, step back button to make sure you're on zero. And let's do a new vector. We'll rename this body. And I'll hit S, which is the draw shape tool. It's right here. And we'll use the square tool. I'll just drag over where his shirt is and I already selected his shirt color um, I did that by clicking on the uh, color dropper or eyedropper then just going over his uh, shirt there I'm gonna hit a I'll go ahead and make his uh, shoulders go up a little bit right there pretty simple body I'm gonna hit a and add a couple more points to um, the side of his body too because and we're gonna make him bend also and let's go ahead and create another vector layer I'll hit S we'll create a new shape draw his neck so we were on square I'll hit Q select that change the style to his skin color hit A and we'll go ahead and make the base of his neck next to his shirt I'll hit a again I'm gonna round the top of his neck out that's where his neck would meet the his head and we'll make sure that we uh, put that underneath oops let me rename that neck put that under the body and the head group like that and let's see oh let's go ahead and make the shirt a style as well so let's click on the body hit Q select it and go new style shirt color and maybe at the very end I'll show you why we're doing all these styles too 
uh, color styles, I should say. Okay, let's go ahead and do a new vector. Let's go do a left arm. His right arm, but it's left to us. Go ahead and hit uh, S, draw a square. And I'm just gonna hit T, click on one of the points and just drag these over here. And his elbow is gonna be right about there. So we'll just put it in its general position like that. I'll go ahead and make these ovals. So I'll hit A, add endpoints and curve those out. A, pull that out, hit C, curve those like that. Then I'm gonna do a Command C, Command V to copy and paste. This will be his lower arm. I'll hit T and kind of position these points. It's gonna taper a little bit down to his wrist. And we'll go ahead and fix this. After, when we make joint references, we'll go ahead and uh, fix all this. Let's move this up a little bit. Okay, let's do another new vector. Call this waist. Hit S. Go ahead and draw his waist out. And I'll hit Q. Select the uh, color. Turn that color off because it was still on his shirt color. We'll go ahead and use the color picker. Select the brown of his pants and then we'll go ahead and make that a style. So go to new. Pants color. Like that. And let's go ahead and do another new vector. And this will be his left leg. And go ahead and hit S so we can create a new shape. Draw his upper leg. Um, maybe hit T. I think his knee would probably be right about there. Ish. Stretch that out. Do the same thing that we did with the arm. Hit A. Add a point at the top and bottom and curve those out to make them ovals. Hit T. Select it. Copy. Command C. Command V. Copy and paste. Move this down. Hit T. Move these points in place. The bottom of his pants. Let me see. Okay, then we'll go ahead and make his sock. Hit A, add a point to the bottom of his pants, and then make his, uh, disconnect the lines to make a sock shape. And we'll go ahead and hit U, and we'll select all the points that we need to. Um, if you select too many points like that, um, the checkered part will go away. That means it won't fill correctly, so you need to hold Option down and deselect any points that you might have accidentally hit. And then I'll hit Create Shape. It's got the pants color still in it, so we'll turn that off. None. We'll go ahead and use the color picker. Select White. And go ahead and name this a new style. Sock Color. And we'll create a new vector. Call this left shoe. And I'll hit S. Again, I'm just always starting with a square. It's the easiest thing to do. Hit T. We'll move a couple of the points. Like this. Hit A to add a few more. I'm going to add um, a couple on the sides just because it'll be easier to uh, turn the shoe when we need to. We'll hit Q. Select that. Take that sock color off of the style. We'll go ahead and hit our or use our color picker again. Get that gray color for a shoe. Rename that uh, shoe color. And I'll hit uh, T just so I can see those points. And then I'm going to hit C to go ahead and curve these out a little bit. Like that. Get them all into place. One more point so it curves around his sock a little better. There we go. 
So we got the left shoe and left leg. And let's go ahead and select his left leg and duplicate it. Just use the duplicate layer button and rename it right leg. Do a command A and that selects all of those points. We'll just drag it over here to this side. And let's go ahead and select the left shoe and duplicate that. Command A, select all of the points. Oops, we have to name it right shoe. Command A selects all the points. We'll use the flip horizontal button. Move that over to this side. Get that into position kind of. Let's do the same with the uh, arm. Uh, left arm, duplicate it, type in right arm, return, go ahead and hit command A so it selects all those points and we'll flip it with the flip horizontal button and move that into place right out there. Alright, so we've now got all his basic body parts. We'll do his coat last, um, but I'm going to use uh, my joint reference layer technique to get these to look uh, a little bit better um, before we uh, rig them. So let's make a new vector, call this joint reference. I'll go ahead and put this at the top above the head and everything else. And I'm gonna hit S for create shape and this time we're gonna use the oval tool. And I'm gonna select uh, green, oops. We're still on the shoe style. Let's go to none. Now select green and then red. Doesn't matter what color it is. I just like using those colors for this. And I'm gonna hold shift and option down and that's just gonna make a perfect circle. And the shoe color style still in there. So let's hit Q, select it, turn that off. So we've got that green color. Let's go ahead and turn the fill down too so we can see through it. So I'm just clicking on the fill and I'm going over to this bar right here and uh, making it transparent just so I can see through it. Hit OK and I'm going to make the uh, stroke a little thinner. Maybe one, one point. Then I'm going to make a crosshair. I'm going to do that by hitting A. I'm just going to drag and drop. Oh, why did it connect there? Like that, hit U, select that line we just uh, drew and then hit create shape. That just makes a red line. And I'm gonna hit T and click on the line and I'm just moving it so it goes right over the um, vertice points on the left and right. So kind of right there. Then I'll do a command C, command V, copy and paste, hold shift down, grab the inside box and rotate that second one we just copied. So it's up and down. And move that into place um, right where the vertices are on, on the top and bottom. That way we know exactly where the center is because we need that center too, as well as the circle. So now that we have a joint reference, I'm gonna hit G and grab all of the points and hit T so I can shrink it. And I'm going to Gonna position that right on the side of his shirt, but following the curve of where his uh, shoulder would be. And it needs to be about as thick as his arm, which is about like that. So we'll go ahead and put that right here, like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it so it's pointing down towards his hand, um, just so we get the vertices to line up kind of better I should say. So see how I'm turning this and I'm trying to get this point kind of centered within his arm. And then I'll copy and paste that. Command C, Command V. So we have another joint reference. I'll go ahead and put that right here. And then we'll go, go ahead and select the uh, left arm. And all we're going to do is line up these points. So for the bottom arm, we're gonna line up, hit T, 
and select just this one point. Move that where the crosshair goes over the circle, the vertice at the top, and then we'll do the same with the left and right. And actually, you know what? Let me go ahead on the joint reference. I'm gonna hit uh, Q and select the stroke too and make that see-through as well. Actually, you should make it a different color. Mm, let's do purple and see-through because the vertices turn red. Hit OK. And I'm gonna hit copy. So it's gonna copy the stroke and the fill. Then I'm gonna hit Q. I'm gonna select um, the strokes and that circle. If you hold shift down, by the way, um, and then just drag and drop, just drag over anything, it'll start selecting them. So I'm gonna hit paste. There we go. That's a little better. So again, we're gonna go select the left arm. I'll hit T so we can see the points. And what I'm doing is, see how I'm lining up this point to the top of the crosshair? And then we need to line up these two uh, vertices to the left, or for the bottom and top arm, overlap them right there. Put this point here, this one there. And we're doing this so when we do the arm bend, it's just a lot easier. Um, looks like they're connected like that. And let's go ahead and do that to the shoulder. I hit T. I'm just gonna move these into place so it looks better. Like that. There we go. And actually, since we did all that work, well, not a lot of work, let's go ahead and just do this instead. The right arm, let's just delete it. And now let's go ahead and duplicate the uh, left arm. Call it right arm. Command A, flip it and move it over. That way we don't have to um, realign all these points. But just to make sure, let's go ahead and grab those joint references as well. Hit G, grab both of those. Command C, Command V, copy and paste, flip them, and move them into place just so we know they're lined up right. And I'm holding shift down so they move only left and right or up and down. So right there, looks pretty good. Okay, let's do that for the legs. I'll hit G, I'll grab any one of these joint references. Command C, Command V, copy and paste. We'll move this down here. And I'll grab this inner box and rotate it so it's straight up and down. Close to it. And we're gonna put this right, um, let's make this a little bit bigger. Holding option down so it expands from the center. And that looks about right. We're gonna have the uh, circle kind of touch the uh, side and the bottom of our waist. So let's try and line that up. So I'm just lining up this point here, holding shift down so I can drag it and there we go. <laughs> Get that lined up. And then I'll do a command C, command V, copy and paste. Put one down here for the knee. right about there and while we're on the joint reference layer let's go ahead and just grab both of those copy paste move them over here because we know they're aligned correctly so like that now let's grab the right leg zoom in again zooming in with my mouse wheel and panning with the spacebar hit T so I'm gonna go ahead and Move these points onto the target. Go down here, move these points onto the target. And you'll notice I don't have to click directly on the point. If I'm just close to it, it'll grab it, which is kind of nice because then you can see exactly where the point is. And kind of overlap these two. Just 
just like that. Grab the left leg, go ahead and align those to the targets as well. Maybe curve this one out. Just hit C, left click and drag to the uh, right, curve it out, hit T, line the targets like that. There we go. And let's, oh, let's go ahead and change the uh, shape of the waist just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is let's move them above the legs real quick because I want to show you what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to add a couple points on the waist, which is just a rectangle right now. Um, right here on the target and here on the target, I just hit A, add a couple points. And then I'm going to grab the bottom corner points and move those in just so they're on the uh, target circle. Hit C and curve those out a little bit. I'm just making sure that it kind of curves um, with the leg. When we move it, it'll look like um, it's still connected, but not boxy. So let's go ahead and do that. And looks like our left leg, let's go ahead and drag that underneath the legs again. We need to, I didn't adjust the upper left leg. Hit T, move those into the targets. Like that. There we go. Okay, we got the arms and legs all done. Let's go ahead and start rigging. So now we need to select our bone layer, the main one, Rick Sanchez. And we're going to start by drawing a bone right on the waist. So I'll hit A. And when you're on the bone layer, A is actually going to add a bone. So we'll draw one here. And with that being red still, we'll go ahead and draw one from bottom of the shirt to the middle of the torso. And then another one up to the neck. I'm going to go right up to about where the shirt meets the neck. And then I'll... Uh, go ahead and do another one to the top of the neck kind of where we drew it like right about there I think and then we're gonna do one more and this is gonna be the head tilt bone so let's with that still being red on the neck bone let's draw one to the side like that okay now we need to make the arms and legs but we need to make sure that we're connecting or parenting the bones correctly so we need to hit B and make sure you select the chest bone. So you need to make sure that this is red and then hit A. And then we're just gonna use those targets to draw the bones. We'll just go ahead and put our cursor right in the center of the target. Draw it to the next target. Draw this one down. And I didn't have enough space, so I'm gonna hold space bar down, move my canvas, hit T. I can go ahead and grab the end of that bone. Make that go down to the hand. Hit A, add another bone for that. That's where our hands are going to be. I won't do the hands just yet. So make sure we get the arms and legs rigged correctly. Now we need to do the right arm and we need to do the same thing. Make sure you hit B, select the chest bone, hit A, and then we'll go start from the center of the target, draw it down here, and then down to the wrist, and then one more for the hand. Okay, now we need to connect the legs. We need to hit B, and we need to start parenting or connecting from the hip. So we'll select the hip bone or waist bone, and then do the same exact thing we just did for the arms. Hit A, start on the target center, go to the next one, and then down. We're gonna move the canvas a little bit. I'll hit T. I'm going to extend this down to the bottom of the sock, hit A and add this to the shoe. And I'll go ahead and do it to the side because we're going to do a little foot turn also. Let's do that again for the right leg, hit B, select the waist bone, hit A, start from the target, down to the knee, move the canvas, hit A. down to the bottom of the sock and over to the tip of the toe 
Okay, I think we have all of our bones that we need for the body. So I'm gonna hit Command A. That'll select all of our bones. And I'm gonna turn the bone strength down because we're not gonna use uh, bone strength. We're gonna use uh, point binding. So we'll turn all those off like that. And let's go ahead and just look at the parenting. I'll just hit P. So you can see with these red arrows how they're parented and it should look just like this. So the hand goes to the lower arm upper arm to the chest. Same with this arm. And then the chest bone all link back down to the waist. And then the both legs go from the toes to the lower leg, upper leg to the waist. And all of that looks correct. So let's go ahead and start binding real quick. So with the head group, because it's got all those other parts that we've already made, we're just gonna bind the entire folder to a bone. So let me hit B and click on the canvas to hide everything. And let's go ahead and hide the uh, reference layer for a second. Let's go ahead and start binding everything. The head group, we'll select it. Then we're gonna use this tool right here. It's called the bind layer tool. So we'll click on that and, oh, it's already bound. This is the bone I wanted to bind to, but if I wanted to do it to this one, you can see it turns bright red and the line is really, really thick. So that's that's exactly what we want, is to bind it to this bone that we had sticking out um, from the neck bone. And then we'll go ahead and click on the neck. And I'll hit B. I'm gonna select the bone. And I keep talking and telling you guys what my shortcuts are, B and G and A. Um, it's just something you should get used to because it's really easy. Um, if you don't do it, it just wastes a lot of time. So if you instead of hitting B, you'd have to come over here, which is not a big deal. But when you're working really fast, it's just nice to get used to using these shortcuts. So I'll do it without the shortcuts really quick. Hit B for selecting the bone. Select the bone. Then you have to come up to select points. Hit G. And we're going to select just these top three points right there. Make sure the bone and the points are all red. And we'll hit bind points, bind points, just like that. But the bottom of the neck, I'm actually going to bind to this uh, chest bone. So I'm going to hit B, select it, hit G, grab the points, and then just go to bind, bind, just like that. And then let's go ahead and select the body. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'll hit G, select these top points right here. Remember we added a couple at the bottom of the shirt, but we just want this to control these upper points. So we'll bind points, bind points, hit B, select the lower bone of the body and hit G and grab those four points of the shirt down here and bind those points. And then we'll go ahead and select the waist bone, hit B, select the bone, and make sure we're on the waist, hit G, click in the shape, it's selected all of the points that we needed, and we'll bind points, bind points. Let's go to the left arm, I'll hit B, and then I'll hit G and select inside this uh, upper arm shape. Bind those, bind, B, select the bone, hit G, select the lower arm, and bind the points there. Select the right arm layer, and go the same same process, B, select it, uh, G, select it, and bind, bind, B, G, select it, bind, bind. And at any time, you can just hit Z even on frame zero and just check to see that if things are connected correctly. Arms look good. Looks like we've got the uh, upper body working. It's The head's still connected. Um, we can move the neck left and right, but we can also tilt the head as well, which is all good. And let's go down to the legs and select the left leg. Hit B. Select the bone, hit G, 
select the artwork and bind those points. B, G, bind points. And then select the right leg. Same thing. B, G, bind, bind, B, G, bind, bind. Now something that I did, and I did this on purpose, remember we created the sock on this too? I didn't actually grab those points down there. So a lot of times you'll get this error. So if I hit Z and try and move the legs, it looked like they're um, connected correctly, but I didn't grab those points. So now the sock, it looks like it's broken. And that's an easy fix. If you've missed some points that you uh, forgot to bind or didn't bind, all you need to do is hit B and select that bone and you can see what's connected to it already it turns red automatically i'll hold shift down grab the bottom of the sock oops hit b select that bone hit g select those points on the bottom of the sock and then hit bind points again now if i hit z the sock's connected okay then we'll just hit b Select that, select the right shoe, command A, it selects all those points, and we'll bind those, hit Z, that's looking good, and let's go ahead and um, do the other leg, left leg, hit B, B, G, oh, did I do that already? Oh, yeah, I just didn't do the socks. Hit B, select that bottom uh, leg, hit G, grab those points that we missed and bind those. Hit B, select the shoe bone, left shoe, command A, selects all the points and bind, bind. Whoops. Uh-oh. I lost him. There he is. Oops. Bind, bind. There we go. Okay, so now we have Rick pretty much rigged. Um, hit Z. You can see that we can move his arms and legs and he can bend. There's a couple of things that we can fix here real quick too. So the overlap. These look like separate parts, but we want to make them look like uh, um, they're just connected. So let's go ahead and use the hide edge tool. And I'm going to select the left arm. I'll zoom in here and I'll just click on these two lines right there. And maybe just this line. I'll go ahead and... Um, adjust the shoulder a little later, but we want this to look like this is connected. I'll hit T and I'm just going to grab this top point and I'm going to move it down a little bit and I can use the uh, bone as a guide to keep it centered. So I'll just put it like right about there. Maybe have a little bend to it still. Go over to the other arm, right arm, hide edge, hide those, hit T, move this down just a little bit. We could really make it flat actually, but I like leaving it a little round just to make sure it looks connected still. And hide that edge on the shoulder. Hit Z just so we can see the bend. And the bend looks good on the elbow. Let's go ahead and do the legs. Uh, left leg. We'll hide these. Oops. Hide those up there and you can uh, hit T and make this flat almost. I mean, we can make it flat. That'd be okay, I think. Let me, yeah, hit Z. So see the reason why we curve this is so if the leg is going to the left or right, it looks like it's just following the contour of um, our character. And we it, see how the points just line up just, just right when we turn it. It's exactly what we want and I'll hide these edges hit T flatten this one a little bit grab the right leg hide those hit T move this down and 
same for up here. Oops. Hide edges and hit T and flatten this too. That looks good. All right. His knees look good. Um, they're a little off. See, I didn't. Let's go ahead and adjust that real quick. Um, turn the joint reference on again. Okay, so it looked a little off just because I haven't curved the bottom part of this out enough. So let's curve that out so it follows the circle of our target. And now let's go ahead and bend the knee. That looks much better. See how it looks connected? That looks good. Um, let's go ahead and draw a couple of his hands just so that we have something to go off of. Um, we'll go ahead and do a new vector layer. Call this left hand. Oops, and drag it. Make sure it's in, in our group, the Rick Sanchez group. Put that on top, right underneath the bone layer. And I'll hit S. We'll go ahead and start with the square. And let's go ahead and change the style to his skin color. Go ahead and drag and drop a square, hit T. Go ahead and use T to move a couple of the points. Hit A to add points. And I don't after I hit A, I can just keep clicking on the lines and drawing. So do a whole lot hit C I'll curve out his fingertips a little bit and that looks good good for now it's kind of wonky but let's hit a draw a little line here hit U, select line and hit spacebar that just makes it look like uh, the fat of his hand or his thumb is right there okay and let's go ahead and do make sure we're on the bone layer real quick hit B or no not the bone layer the hand but hit B and select the bone command A selects all the points and just bind those hit Z to check it it's looking good and then we'll do the same for the other side, let's go ahead and just copy his left hand. Duplicate, type in right hand. Command A, selects all those points, hit T. Flip horizontally, move that over into place. Hit B, select the bone. Command A, select all the points and bind, bind. There we go. And Let's go ahead. Oh, you know what else? See when I tilt his um, body? There's space down here. Let's go ahead and do something with his waist. We'll go ahead and drop the waist to the bottom. Uh, under the body, anyway. And I'm going to hit A. I'm going to add a point. I'm going to drag it right up the center of his body. Or close to it. And then I'm going to curve it out. Like that. And the reason I'm doing that is so if I bend his body, see how it kind of contours right there. And if let's get it perfect, let's go ahead and hit command left bracket, turn the timeline on, and we'll go ahead and make this look just right by going into the timeline. Let me zoom in. I'll hit uh, Z and turn him and then I'm going to select the waist I hit T I'm gonna grab this point I'm gonna pull it up and see how it's I'm just trying to line it up really close to his shirt like that that looks good I hit Z oops let's check the uh, other side 
That's really close. Let's go ahead and select the waist again. Maybe move it down just a tad, just like that. So what we did, the reason I'm doing this to make it look just right is I'm making keyframes in the timeline, but then I'm gonna grab them, cut them, command X, and then paste them in frame zero. And you see how it adjusted it just a little bit? Now we don't have to worry about um, the when the waist bends. I can do that in the, uh, see that? We don't have to make a smart bone action or anything like that to adjust the waist. It's just, he, it looks okay or decent uh, when we're bending his waist. And the other thing is, we can do that again. Let's go ahead and go to frame six or whatever and hit Z. Let's bend his body a little bit. So those points that we made are really sharp still. So we wanna select the body, hit C, and let's go ahead and curve these points out so it, it looks like a, more of a natural bend. Like that. And you can even move these points wherever you want, just to make sure it looks uh, decent. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna select all those keyframes, cut them, go to frame zero, and paste. And now let's adjust them a little tiny bit. And now, let's go into the timeline again and just check. We've got a much more natural bend this way. This one's not as much. Let's go ahead and select the body. Again, I'm doing this also because um, I don't really want to make a smart bone action for this. I just want this to bend right. Um, and we only want the curve, actually. That's why I had a problem. Let's go ahead and select the curves, not the po point adjustments. We'll cut those, paste them on frame zero, like that. Let's see. It's looking better. Much better. Uh, but again, you can always come back and really fine tune everything. I'm just doing this kind of fast. Uh, just so we can get this all rigged and whatnot. Um, let's do one more thing too. Let's go ahead and make his belt. So when we do the uh, body turn, and I'm gonna do a new vector layer oh, on frame zero, remember. Call it belt. Hit S for a new shape. We we'll use the square tool as always. I'll just draw a really long belt that overlaps his entire body. And we're still on the skin style, so hit Q, select it, turn that off. Then we'll go ahead and um, let's turn the opacity up. It was still on the um, colors that we use for the joint references. So turn this up to, so I'll use the color picker, drag and drop over his belt color, and then the stroke I'm just gonna turn black. And let's zoom in so we can see it. Yeah, that looks good. Hit Q, select that. Let's uh, do a new style, belt, color. And draw another uh, square, hit S for his buckle. And just drag and drop, hit uh, Q, select it, turn off the style, create a new style by selecting color, yellow. Actually, let's use the yellow from the reference picture. There we go. New style, belt, buckle. There we go. And let's kind of move that into position. I'll hit T, uh, Command A, select all the points so we can move the belt into position. So move it right about there. Um, 
I'm going to select just the belt itself and make it a little bit thinner by hitting T and selecting it. Let's squeeze this together. Let's make the belt buckle centered a little more. There we go. Okay. And so what I want to do is mask the belt out because we're, when we turn him, we just want to pull it to the left and right. So just for now, I'm going to take the uh, reference picture, which is in the uh, bone group. I'm going to click on it and drag it out of the group. So it slides back to the left because we don't want to be in the group. We want the waist to be at the very bottom. Now I'm going to double click my main bone group, Rick Sanchez. Click on masking. Then I'll click hide all and apply. And... Oh, you know what? Cancel. Undo. <laughs> Command Z. The belt's not in the group. We need to go ahead and drag that and drop that above the waist. Right there. Let's try that again. Double click the main bone group. Masking. Hide all. And apply. There we go. Let's hide the reference layer too. So that hid everything except the waist. And the belt is seen because that's it's being um, revealed from the mask, which is the hip or the, uh, yeah, the waist uh, artwork. That's why it's showing some of his shirt because remember we drew it or pulled it up a little bit. So all we need to do now is make these visible. So everything else, the body, the right arm, left arm. I'm only going to do a few because when I made this video earlier, it crashed the computer. So I'm just going to hold shift down and grab three layers or so. Actually, double click on one, then hold shift down and grab a couple, go to masking, and click don't mask layer and apply. So that brought our shirt and arms back. We'll do the same, same thing, double click on the leg, left leg, hold shift down, grab a few, don't mask. I'm just trying not to make it crash because <laughs> it doesn't like when you try and do a whole bunch at once. Otherwise, you can just double click on each layer, mask, and don't mask, and apply to bring everything back. It's going to take away that little circle that has that's half white, half gray. And don't mask. Don't mask the head group. Uh, don't mask this layer. Joint reference doesn't matter. Uh, well, yeah, it does if we're going to fine tune. We'll turn that off. Double click. Don't mask. Don't mask. I didn't hit apply right here on the hand. And OK. Oops. There we go. Um, let's hide the joint reference. Um, the other thing that we should do probably is let's color code everything just so we know um, what's what for the body turn so we know how to change the layer ordering. So anything that's on the right side of the body, I'll go ahead and click on the right hand. I'll hold down command. I'm on a Mac and I'll click on the right shoe, right leg, right arm. And I'll go ahead and color them purple and apply just so it's easier to keep track uh, again of the um, layers and let's go ahead and hide the styles so I'll command right bracket just so we can deal with just the uh, layers and I'll do the same with the left side hold command down left shoe left leg left arm change the color we'll do orange and apply and then anything that's in the center. So the head group is in the center, the neck, body, belt, waist. And we'll just recolor those yellow and apply. So now let's go ahead and um, let's check the ordering real quick. I want to see something. So this hand, oh, the arm goes behind the the upper arm goes behind the uh, 
head. Oh no, the whole arm does, but the hand doesn't. So let's go ahead and put the uh, left arm and the left hand. I'll hold command so I can grab the arm and the hand together. If I drag it upwards, it'll just put them together. We'll put that at the very top, just above or just under the Rick Sanchez bone group. So if I hit Z, now his arm is in front of his hand, uh, head, which is what we want. Um, and we let's do the right arm. Hold command down and right hand. And even though the right hand's right where I want it to be, if I drag and drop, see how it makes a little red line? It's going to move that right arm up too, just like that. Hit Z. So yeah, you can cover his face. His arms are in front of his body, which is good. And, oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and bind the uh, belt. So that turns with his uh, torso. Let's go ahead and select belt. And I can use the bind layer tool and just bind it to this bone. See how it turns bright red? Hit Z so we can check it out. That way it bends with him. It does get messed up kind of if it's too extreme, but we'll make it so he just bends just to about there. Probably need to adjust the waist and legs a little bit too. Oh, but you also notice with masking, the uh, stroke on the left and right's gone. We just need to double click on the waist Click masking and expand one pixel and extrude strokes. And that'll just keep that there like that. There we go. That's good. And let's go ahead and make a body turn real quick. We'll do a body turn left to right. Um, I know this video is pretty long, so we won't make the hands. I guess I'll make one more video with making his coat and switch layers for his hands and turning his uh, feet. But we'll go ahead and start the body turn anyway. So, let's go ahead and go to the main bone layer. Hit B. Make sure you click on the canvas so nothing's selected. We'll go ahead and hit A and draw a new bone. And then we'll hit B again. Rename this body turn. And I'll turn the label on give it a color just so it's easy to spot and we'll go to window actions make sure you click on the smart bones tab new and then make sure you type in body turn exactly like you did with the uh, bone and if you hit return and it turns blue down here that means it's correct and we're just gonna leave this on frame one you don't need to um, make any space in between uh, to make the uh, animation or the turn interpolate. It'll do it for you. So I'll hit T, grab the bone, turn it to the right, hold shift down so it snaps to the right. And Rick's body is pretty easy because he's a stick man. So all you really need to do for the body turn to the right is hit T, grab the arm bones, grab from the fattest part of the bone, the very end point and we're gonna offset it just a little bit from the center just left of the center and go ahead and line up this bone together so they're right there the, the legs we're just gonna move right in the dead center like that I know that looks really weird but let's double click on the uh, Rick Sanchez layer and make sure that we have depth sort selected and enable animated layer order. That way when we turn the, the body turn bone, um, the layers will readjust their position automatically. So I'll hit apply and okay. So we need to reorder them once and we need to make sure that the right leg, everything uh, right of the body needs to go underneath the waist now. So right hand, right arm, Holding command down to grab both of those. Drag those to the very bottom. Like that. Oops. Didn't, didn't move. There we go. 
Now that arm's behind the body. Then we need the right shoe and right leg. That goes just above the right hand and arm. But it'll still go behind the body. And I think that's it. But then let's go ahead and readjust the body. So for the belt, or no, let's do the body first. Let's grab the waist. I'll do a command A, then T. And holding option down, I can grab left or right and squeeze it. So we get um, his body turning. It's just gonna be thinner like that. We'll do the same with the body. Select the body, command A, squeeze them together, hit T and kind of just adjust these points a little bit like that. Curve this out for his back. And then on the waist, we can adjust the crotch a little bit so it's not as round as his little little booty. Oops. Kind of bring that in a little bit. And body. Again, you can always adjust this later, even after you've made um, these types of changes. That. And then the belt is, let's do his waist a little bit. Make his butt stick out just a little bit. So it looks like a butt. Belt, all we're gonna do is do a command A. And we're gonna slide this over to halfway to the belt buckle because he's turned halfway around. And we'll double click back into the timeline. We should have a body turn. So now, even though we just did him doing a body turn all the way to the right, if I go in the timeline, select the bone layer, grab this body turn, you can see we can have a three fourths position by going to 45 degree angle. And all of the layers have moved to the correct place. So this leg is behind everything. This arm is behind his body and we can click on his head group and we can go ahead and animate his head still. We can turn it and I can actually bend the body and the head's connected correctly still. And he's kind of ready to go and I can still keep turning him, his body. So that's, that's pretty cool because um, like I said, he's a pretty simple character so his body doesn't take a lot. Um, we'll do the exact same thing, but the opposite side. So to do that, on frame zero, go to window, or actually this is open already, the actions, go ahead and do new action. And all you need to do to make the other action is do body, turn, space two. So if you wanna do any action, uh, second action for any bone, just make sure you name it correctly, space two. It'll turn blue, I'll do the same thing, hit T, hold shift down, turn it to the left, grab these bones, T, move this slightly to the right of the center, grab the legs, move them in the center, and reorder the arms, everything uh, the left arms need to go underneath the waist now. So left hand, left arm, hold down command, drag and drop those under the waist. Left uh, leg and left shoe, grab those, put them just above the hand and arm, like that. And that should be good. Select the body, command A, hit T, squish him a little bit, hit T, adjust his body as needed, move those points around, like that.
select the waist, do the same thing. Command A, hold option down so it squashes it from the center. If you don't hold option down, it'll only grab one side. But if you do option, it'll do both. So it's a lot easier to just squish it like that. Hit T, adjust his, the front of his crotch. <laughs> Maybe around his butt out a little bit on this side. And I know I keep repeating myself, but go ahead and do, um, you can go ahead and adjust the turn and everything later too. It doesn't have to be perfect. And really that's it for the body turn. We'll need to make turns for his feet so they don't look like one of them's backwards and make more hands. Double click back into the timeline. Let's go into the timeline real quick. Click on the bone layer. Now he turns left and right. I mean, it looks, see that? Left hands in front of everything, right arms behind everything. We turn him this way. Turn his head too. And now his right arm is in front. And this, arm, uh, this leg is in front. And again, we can uh, animate him. Here, let's go ahead and animate him. We got the head talking still, I think. Listen, I'm Rick Sanchez. Yeah. I'm going to have him walk a little bit. Oop, let's turn the strength down on the body turn. Uh, frame one. Do my classic uh, walk cycle. It's not the best one, but it's, it's fast. <laughs> it's fast and easy. So hit T. I'm going to turn him in three fourths position. I could have him walking um, straight to the side, but even in animation on TV, they don't really, they always have the character kind of turned a little bit so you can see more of the body. It just looks better. I haven't changed the shoe like yet, so it's going to look weird, but I'll still go ahead and I just want to show him walking so you can see that his head and everything follows along. So we'll do like that. <laughs> this thing, he has a broken foot. That's all that is. And um, Command A, Command F. That freeze frames all the bones into this position. Do the same for 24. A, Command F. Go to 12. Put his legs in the opposite position and his arms in the opposite posi position. I can't talk. Command A, Command F. And then his back leg's going forward first, so we'll bend that on frame six. And his back arm a little bit. Command A, Command F. Bend his front leg. Command A, Command F. Grab these um, points, cycle. And then I'll give him a little bop. Grab his entire layer, click on it, go to six, move him down a little bit. Copy, paste on 12 and 24. Delete that last keyframe. Line this up to 18 and cycle. So just imagine his foot's facing the right way though and he's, his hands look correct. <laughs> But let's see how he looks. Listen, I'm Rick Sanchez from Earth Dimension C-137. Don't mean any <laughs> harm. Coming in peace. It's all cool in the uh, good in the neighborhood is what I was trying to come, is what I meant. So the whole reason I did that walk cycle was so you could see his, his um, head is connected and all the animation that I made earlier in the other videos is still there. But Just it looks right. C and I can even come in here while he's walking. <laughs> and hit Z and I can move his chest so I can have him lean back some listen I'm Rick Sanchez from Earth Dimension I'm Rick Sanchez listen I'm Rick Sanchez from Earth Dimension C1 come in here and hit Z again have him move up 
grab his arm, like keyframes. Listen, I'm Rick Sanchez from Earth Dimension C-137. Don't mean... C-137. Yeah. Dimension C-137. Don't mean any harm. Coming in peace. It's all cool. So, yeah, he's almost ready to go. We just need to um, fine-tune some points, make his um, lab jacket... Make his feet turnable and some different hands. And he should be pretty good to go. Um, I'll end the video here. I know I said there was only going to be one more, but man, these are long. It just it takes a lot less uh, time to do when I'm not explaining. I just go kind of go really fast. But yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. And I swear this time there'll be just one more. And uh, thanks for watching. Listen, I'm Rick Sanchez from Earth Dimension C-137. Don't mean you any harm. Coming in peace. It's all cool in the uh, good in the neighborhood is what I was trying to come, is what I meant.